In this superficial view, you can see the fascia of the abdominal rectus muscle and sutures from a previous hernia repair. Directly under the fascia lies the abdominal rectus muscle. The lighter area is the tendinous inscription. And here the border between the rectus and oblique muscles is pointed out. The fascia is lifted further with the attached external oblique muscle. Here you see the external oblique muscle, which reveals the internal oblique muscle when resected distally. The fascia is now completely removed and the perpendicular direction of the muscle fibers of the external and the underlying internal oblique muscle are shown with forceps. The external oblique muscle and internal oblique muscle are lifted, uncovering the transverse abdominal muscle. At the point of the arcuate line of the abdomen, the posterior rectus fascia ends. Caudal to this point, the peritoneum lies directly posterior to the rectus muscle. The rectus muscle is transected distally and lifted to cranial, showing the posterior rectus fascia. Here, a perforating vessel is cut. This epigastric vessel runs on the posterior side of the rectus muscle and has been transected at this level. The layers of the abdominal wall from ventral to dorsal are the skin, the subcutis, the anterior rectus sheath, the abdominal rectus muscle, the posterior rectus sheath, and the peritoneum. The peritoneum is opened and lifted, showing the small intestine, the greater omentum, and the round ligament of the liver, which runs to the umbilicus. The falciform ligament is pointed out, which is part of the round ligament. The ribs are retracted to demonstrate the connection between the liver, the falciform ligament, and round ligament. The left upper quadrant of the abdominal wall is dissected to show its relation to the falciform and round ligament. The falciform ligament, and here you can see the connection to the posterior side of the abdominal wall. Finally, the round ligament going down to the umbilicus.